Starting tomorrow, the show you have just seen will be available anytime on HBO On Demand. Hey, Johnny. Hey, bro. How about hiring Turtle as your assistant? <laughs> Next on Entourage. Turn on the news. Tom, is that you? Yeah, it's me, and I don't know what to do. Sorry, Vin. So how is this golf? Better understand the earth. Judy Muller, ABC News, Los Angeles. In Pittsburgh today, doctors say that storm... The King Jr.'s Holly. Holly! No time for small talk, Holly. Tom's on a deadline. It's a very serious case of writer's block, and he sent me down here to get him two things. Okay. Shoot. Number one, a big pot of your coffee. All right, I've got that. Number two. Oh, my goodness! Oh, what was two? Something to eat? No. Oh! I told you he has writer's block. A pot of coffee and an idea to go? I mean, right up. Oh, Holly, you've got an idea? No, not yet. Uh, but I mean, uh, how hard could it be? <laughs> I mean, he could write about, um... Yeah. I mean, he could write, <laughs> he could write about... He could write about how hard it is to find something to write about. <laughs> oh, no, I can't write about that. He already wrote about that. In fact, did a three-part series on that. Well, a fourth part's not gonna kill anybody, is it? Mm, we don't want to take a chance. to say <laughs> ain't got no column i'm happy anyway anything to type yet oh, oh. I, I don't want to rush you or anything i just want you to know that i'm ready when you are have i had a lunch break yet twice maybe i need a nap you already did that too and you jogged and showered and waxed the car and fed the squirrels well it's been a very productive day then <laughs> i feel good Oh, that's good, because I don't boss. You know, those people from the paper are calling me every 15 minutes now, and they are very angry, and they're yelling at me, and they're telling me to do things with your column that I don't believe are physically possible. Did you realize that caffeine occurs naturally in cocoa beans, which is the basis for all chocolate products? Oh, dear, is that what your column's going to be about? No, no. <laughs> I just find that fascinating. Mm. Why, uh, do you have an idea for a column? <laughs> no, I just have an idea about your deadline, which is tomorrow morning when the rooster crows. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you, Dad. Hey, 
Hey, Danny, you ever notice how a junk drawer is like an archaeologist's dream? You dig through the junk and you discover the family. Look here. Kit, for a little wading pool, huh? Oh, look, a wheel from Barbie's Corvette. And some oil for your baseball glove. This is cool. Having trouble finding an idea for your column, Dad? Oh, I, I just find this fascinating. Why, uh, do you have an idea for a column? Nope, you got all my best stuff last week. Hey, guys! Plaid! Why is it that plaid only looks good in the country? And the city people don't wear plaid. This is fascinating. Better than plaid? <laughs> Well, this is terrific. Have you... Every night. Probably spends a lot of time alone. Undisturbed by well-meaning... You have had your schmack for just Guys, here, it's one man alone against his soul. Under B. Oh, that was something I was going to write. I never finished it. Maybe there's uh, something in here for a column. Uh, no, I... Oh, come on, Dad. Beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> I once read, on the wings of time, grief flies away. But how much time? It's been a year since my wife was killed, and I'm still filled with rage. I'll take that. Listen, Dad, I'm going to go to the library. I'm sure there are some ideas there. Uh, yeah. I'll go to the, the video arcade. There's plenty of uh, video games there. I'm awfully sorry. I didn't know what it was. It's okay, Lily. Well, I guess I'll go check the kitchen. There could be an idea for a story in the pantry. Else I'll just cook lunch for the third time. <laughs> Tonight, August 9th, 1975, Jerusalem is once again a city of silence. But it is not the silence of tranquility. <laughs> it is the tension-filled vacuum preceding the storm of violence. <laughs> Elizabeth, take it from the top, please. I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. <clears throat> I got it. Uh, five, four, three, two... Jerusalem was... <laughs> Come on! It's 110 degrees here. I'm dying. Oh, get in. Please. You look ridiculous. Was my hair weird? Oh, your hair? Who's looking at your hair with those legs? <laughs> Come on. We've been out here for three hours. we got to get through this. Come on. We're professionals. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're right. Let's do it again from the top. I hope you learned a little something about the, the nuances of uh, journalism here. Well, I did. Well, I don't mean to play teacher, but one of us has to set an example. And I thank you. <clears throat> All right. Are you ready? Ready. Five, four, three, two. Tonight, Jerusalem is once again a city of silence. But it is not the silence of tranquility. This is Lakes Nash saying... <laughs> <laughs> that laugh, that wonderful laugh. God, I miss it. There are days I can't bring it back. I'm trying so hard to remember. Favorite flowers were gardenias. Her favorite music was Van Morrison, Ray Charles. She used to love to sing. And I can't remember the sound of her singing. Well, it's a marvelous night for a moon dance. Well, it's a marvelous night for a moon dance. You know, I never thought it would happen. And only three years after her death, my memories of Elizabeth are starting to fade. I hate that. 
Your father is finally writing his column. Please don't distract him. What am I doing? Your milk is too loud. <laughs> Lillian, I don't think the sound of pouring milk is going to distract my dad while he's writing. Oh, no, you don't understand. You see, when someone is engaged in a creative activity, their senses are heightened to an almost unnatural state. It's like Superman. <laughs> it's ridiculous, Lillian. Okay, who's pouring milk? Uh, oh, uh, that was me, Dad. Sorry. I tried to warn you. I understand that Mozart was the same way. Great news, you guys. I found a column for Dad. Come on in, Kurt. All right. If you please. Okay, who's hog calling? Sorry, Dad, that was Kurt. I met him down at the 4-H club. He said you'd write about me. <laughs> Maybe some other time. Uh, I I've got a deadline. <laughs> hey, Lillian Abernathy, I just want you to know I thought you were wonderful, and if I were a hog, I would come running. <laughs> All right, Dad, what do you have that can beat that? Well, well, I got something. What is it? Well, I'm just not ready to show it to you yet. Oh, Tom, this is no time for foolish pride. If you are lost and you don't have an idea for a story, I can get Kurt back. Lillian, I, I'm not bluffing. I've got a column. Something very important. Someone, actually. Okay, Dad. Who? Well, I'm trying to write a column about your mom. What about her? Well, it's just not about her. It's about us, you know, our, our memories and our feelings, our life together. No. I don't understand. Why? No. Is it because you think it's it's not all right to talk about her? Because I think it's all right, you know, to, to keep the memories alive. Dad, you're just using Mom because you have nothing else to write about. Uh, Danny, look. No, Dad! Listen, you write one word about Mom, and I'm not talking to you again. Oh. Um. You really want to print this? I think it's an important subject. Okay. And are you sure this is how you spell suey? <laughs> what else could it be? Could be a column about something else, Tom. Something interesting, perhaps. <clears throat> you don't find the communication between men and hog fascinating? Tom, I serve them next to eggs all day long. The last thing I want to do is talk to them. <laughs> Morning. Hey, Joe. Give me a... Ham and cheese omelet and a side of bacon. Suey. <laughs> hey, Joe, good news. Got the column. a boy. <laughs> Tom. Good. Call of the hog. <laughs> so, it's interesting. I'm not sure this is a column. I see it as more of a Broadway musical. <laughs> is, it, is this how you spell suey? <laughs> you don't want to print the column. Don't print the column. Look, if you want to end our relationship right now, that's fine with me, too. But I'm sick and tired of you making fun of guys like Kurt. <laughs> Who's Kurt? <laughs> Perhaps our nation's premier hog caller, the, the man this column is about. Uh, Tom, <clears throat> let's talk vacation. <laughs> Joe, I'm sorry. If, if you don't want to run the column, I'll understand. Uh, could you help me out here? You want me to run it, or you don't want me to run it? I'll do whatever you say, because, frankly, you scare me. Um, I wanted to write about Elizabeth this week, but the, the kids said no. What? Well, when I brought it up, they got very upset, so I just didn't push it. Tough to reopen the old wounds. Do you remember when her birthday was? June 3rd. How did you remember that? It's the day after mine. <laughs> you always forget that, too. <laughs> I was just starting to feel, I don't know, that I'm having trouble remembering some things about her. Some things just naturally get a little, uh, you know, blurred over time. I'd have to really think to remember, oh, I don't know, the, uh, the color of Elizabeth's eyes. 
spray? Uh-uh. Blue. <laughs> With just a touch of green. The kind of green you, you only get at sunset on the Adriatic. And a, a blue that Monet painted in the gardens at Giverny. A simple blue would have been enough. <laughs> I can't help it. I was madly in love with your wife. As only a best friend can be. Uh, oh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Elizabeth. God. <laughs> she had great hair, mm. didn't she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As gold as the, as the midday sun, just beating, beating, beating on the dunes of the Sahara. It was brown. Sahara gold. No, oh, I was married to her. It was brown. I worshipped her from afar. Gold. Brown. You know, it could have been brown. I was pretty afar most of the time I was worshipping her. <laughs> so much Liz and those kids. They should know what she was really like. I mean, Danny has a sense of humor. Exactly. And Rachel. Uh, Rachel has her eyes. Blue. <laughs> Joe was in love with Elizabeth? <laughs> of course, how could he not be? Everybody was. She was so sweet. That sexist pig. <laughs> Why can't I go to the Golan Heights? You're going. It's not too dangerous for you. Hey, I'm on your side, pal, but we work for Oberman. He's the bureau chief. Yeah, well, Oberman hates women. You know what he calls his wife? He calls her Toots. Oh, uh, Toots is not his wife. Um... <laughs> Uh, Twitch is his mistress. Yeah, he calls his wife a little woman. I hate him. Let's quit. Okay. Right after this war. If I wasn't pregnant, I'd ask him to step outside. Pregnant? Huh. That's how I found out we were going to have Rachel. Elizabeth never liked to do anything the conventional way. How do you like it? I don't know what it is. It's a bed. I built it myself. That's a bed? Yes, it is. Built in the style of the ancient Babylonian marital bed. You know any ancient Babylonians? I'm not sure. Where are you from, big fella? You think I'm getting into that bed, do you? Yeah, I do. Not a chance. You want to bet? She won that bet. I wonder if Danny knows he's part ancient Babylonian. I wonder if he remembers how strong and funny his mother was. I wonder if Rachel remembers. I know Joe remembers. Are you done yet? Yep. What do you think? What do you think? I think you're an ancient Babylonian. <laughs> She was cool and funny. I guess that's where I get it. <laughs> oh, please. Hey, what was that old song that she used to sing? Well, it's a marvelous night for a moon day. That's it. She used to sing that to me every single night. And then she'd kiss me goodnight. She'd whisper, I love you more than Rachel. So, uh, she said that to you, too. She really said that to you? Did you miss her? Yeah, I did. I did, too. How come you never talk about it, then? I guess I just didn't upset you. But you upset me in so many other ways. <laughs> What do you guys think? Have you read? Well, uh, everybody still talking to me? Yes, for now. <laughs> hey, whatever happened to that silly bed you wrote about? Oh, she sold it for six chickens. <laughs> it's a long story. Wait, I remember that story. And she sold the chickens for a couple of suitcases. Yeah, and when we evacuated from Pakistan, 
She put all the family pictures in those two suitcases. I remember fighting with the people at the embassy about smuggling them on the chopper. <laughs> Did she win? She never lost an argument. So where are the pictures? Well, they're around here someplace. Well, we should find them. We should get albums and a whole bunch of other things and stick them in. Absolutely. I don't want to forget all this great stuff. Think about it a lot. Not every day. But most days. Every day. Yeah, me too. But I think that's good. We should think about her. She was great. I'm really glad that you wrote this, Daddy. Yeah, me too. It's really good. You have a way with words. You can do this professionally. <laughs> so when's it going to be in the paper? It's not going to be in the paper. Everybody I wanted to read it has read it. I'm standing on a hill outside of Jerusalem where Palestinian terrorists... <laughs> Palestinian what? Okay, fine. I have had it. I can't take this anymore. Smart guy, if you think you can do any better, give me the camera. Uh, give me the camera. Tom, don't be so sensitive. You think it's easy? Go on. Let's go. Five, four, three, two, do the news. <laughs> This is Elizabeth Nash reporting from Jerusalem, where the big story here tonight is how crazy I am about a certain up-and-coming, handsome young reporter. Oh, Elizabeth. Named Dan Rather. Very funny. No, no. His real name is Tom Nash. Do I? Well, he's cute. Sweet little smile. Great legs. Come on, you can be better than that. Well, he's a little conceited. Boy, does he have great taste in women. Mm -hmm. While the other networks are in reruns, only NBC will present an all-new program as superstar Robert Redford reveals his personal side for the first time on TV. It's an exclusive NBC. Tomorrow at 8, 7 central. Now stay tuned for local news over most of the...